Okay, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Father, we ask you to anoint this service. We ask you to anoint what we're doing. We ask you, Lord, to, to do what you want to do. Encourage those that need to be encouraged. Let people hear your heart as you reinforce the fact that you hear ours, whether we speak out our cry or not. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're going to start with Psalms 34. All right. And we're going to start reading at verse 5. Verse 4, verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him hmm, out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord <laughs> encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. All right. Now, sometimes we don't really understand what's going on in our lives. Life can really throw us some curves. And if we're not careful, we can literally give up on the only one who can help us. So we have to know that we are dealing with a spiritual warfare and that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. But we have to remember it's up to us to pull down those strongholds. But in the meantime, let's deal with the pain, shall we? Sometimes when light hits us, I don't know if you've ever been punched in the gut, but it's it's like being punched in the gut. Life can knock the wind out of you. Literally knock the wind out of your sails. And it becomes difficult and disheartening. So what we end up doing is we react oftentimes before we pray. And God is waiting there to handle our problems. He's waiting. So if you're going through something, if people are coming against you, or it seems like people don't understand you, they don't get you, they don't have patience with you, they are criticizing you or telling you all that you need to do because everything you're doing in their opinion is wrong. You're just not handling it right. Don't turn and just walk away with anger in your heart. Don't get full of all your emotions and react based on how you feel. Right at that moment, when you feel like someone has had, you feel like you've been put upon for whatever reason, whether the other person's right and you're wrong or whether you're right and they're wrong, Ask God to take the hurt out right there and then. As soon as you feel it stirring up in your spirit, ask God to take it out. And ask God to help you forgive. Now, sometimes when you are going through changes, you literally have to go to God and ask him with Bible in hand. You have to ask God to show you what his take on your situation is. Show you what he feels about you and what you're going through. Yeah, we have to do that. Now, all I say is, whatever it is, don't get discouraged. Don't get to the point where you go back to your own ways of handling things. I saw a movie a while back, and it was a perfect 
lesson on how your emotions can literally kill you. And I'm not going to go into detail, but basically this woman, she loved hard. She got angry hard. She reacted hard. Everything was to the extreme. And when she got angry, she couldn't let it go. Her sisters tried to talk her down. Her brother-in-laws tried to talk her down. Her friends tried to talk her down. Professionals tried to get her to see just how out of sorts and out of control she was. Even though she knew she was out of control, she enjoyed that side of herself and decided she was going to let the out of control self stay in control. Yeah, sounds crazy. And it was. Because by the time she got through chasing, stalking, fussing, fuming, throwing temper tantrums, going off on this one, going off on that one, she ended up getting her leg caught in the chain, got tossed overboard and drowned in her own rage, in her own hurts. And she did not have to. She did not have to go to that extreme. But every time she got upset, it was extreme. It was never something where we could sit down, let's talk about this. I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, we need to make some adjustments. Nothing like that. No. Everything was a great big explosion. And as a result, she killed and ruined beautiful things that were right there in her life. And then when someone else stepped in, there was nobody doing her any harm. She filed for a divorce based on a temper tantrum. And as a result, her husband, after years, and blessing her with ooh gobs of money, married the woman that he knew before. She went off and went off. And went on. Now, had she not filed for divorce, every blessing her husband had would have been hers to enjoy with him. But she had to have it her way. And everything ended and exploded in tragedy. She almost killed her ex husband. Now, this is the way some of us live our lives. Now, I got this message last night. So, this has nothing to do with what happened now. I got this last night. So, my point is, the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. See, a lot of us don't want to acknowledge. It says in the Bible, I can't see it right now, but it says in the Bible, he that leans to his own emotions, I'm paraphrasing, he that does things based on his emotions is a fool because it never turns out right. See, we don't get the fact, got to take my shoes off, we don't get the fact that it is not necessary. It is not necessary to implode, explode, go off. It's not necessary. It's also not necessary to walk off in a huff. How do you handle stress? How do you handle situations that are unpleasing? How do you handle setbacks? Let me tell you what James says about that. James 5 says this. James 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. 
Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned, behold, the judge standeth before the door. Hmm. Oh, I tell you. Verse 10. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have, you, ye have heard of the patience of Job and have been, have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Listen, this is where we tend to fall short. When things hit us in life, and we run into obstacles, and we run into barriers, and frustrations, what ends up happening? Instead of us, instead of us having self-control, instead of us putting all, as the Bible says, casting all our care on him, because he cares for us, no, we want to handle this. And we end up making bad matters worse. I'm telling you, if you can humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and let him exalt you, don't exalt yourself. Don't defend yourself. Don't tell it like it is. No, you don't have to do that. Oh, God tries to tell us in so many ways. He knows that situations in life can make us cry. He knows that situations in life can cause us to halt in life, limp through life, be so frustrated we're almost paralyzed in life. But God, God wants us to know he's in control. So who are you acknowledging? Who are you counting on? Who are you leaning on? You leaning on Jesus or are you leaning on human beings who will let you down? That's a given. Because they're not omnipresent like God. They have to sleep. They have to rest. They have life to handle on their own. So who are you leaning on? Because God is ever He's a very present help. He's ever present. He's always right there. But most of us want to hear that voice on the other end of the phone. Most of us want to sit and look at somebody face to face across the dinner table. We don't want to go to God. Because we can't get a two-way conversation out of him. So we think. Here's your conversation right here. Right here. I asked the Lord, just to give you an example. I was praying and the Lord had me praying in tongues for a hot minute. I mean, a hot minute. I don't flow like some of y'all do. And during that hot minute, I heard the cries, the cries, the cries. So I just typed in the cries. And it was one verse that dealt with God hearing the cries. Now, what I realized was God was saying, that's what I want you to deal with. I hear the cries. And every scripture he led me to after that had cries in it, where God hears the cries. I cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard my cry. They cried unto me, and I heard their cry. Cry, I'm hearing their cry. Back to back. When you want an answer from God, instead of leaning to your own understanding, leaning to the beggarly elements of life, the dysfunctional ways, God will have you handle stuff in a way that is so far beyond you. And the way it turns out, instead of you getting a chain caught up on your ankle and you getting thrown overboard and dying, drowning, uh-uh, things will turn out great. Why? Because you're not reacting according to your ways. 
you are waiting on God. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. No, Lord, I don't want to wait on you. You take too long. Now, I can't tell them like I want to tell them if I got to wait on you. If I do it your way, that's boring to me. Really? Righteousness is boring, huh? Mm, not that interesting? Think about that. Think about it. Why is righteousness boring to you? Hmm. That's something to pray about. Say, Lord, what's wrong with me? Why do I like it that way rather than yours? He'll tell you. That's what I love about him. He knows what's wrong with us. Each and every one of us, he knows what's wrong. And he knows how to make it right. If we cooperate with him, are you willing to cooperate? Hmm. Okay, Psalms 30. Sing unto the Lord, verse 4, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of, oh, no, I got to go higher. Verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, mm, there it is again, and thou hast healed me. Healing comes from crying out to the Lord too. Well, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hmm. And in my prosperity, I said I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried unto thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Now, does that put it in a nutshell or what? God can dry your weeping eyes. God can remove the turmoil and the torment. He can remove your fears, your worries, your frustrations, your anger. He can remove it all. Lean on the Lord. Cry out to him. There are times when you have to praise him. Now this just came to my head, so let me go with it. Sometimes you have to praise him through the tears. Oh, God, you know this hurts, but I love you. I praise you anyway because you're good. You're faithful no matter what. You're faithful. When you praise him, things will happen. When you praise him, things will change. When you praise him, joy returns. When you praise him, strength is gained. When you praise him, heaven heals. And the Lord is glorified. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Now, sometimes when we want to whine, sometimes when you want to whine, try praising him instead. Try praising him instead of complaining to him. Try singing to him. 
when you want to scream at him. God is patiently waiting for the precious fruit. Ask God to give you more patience as you go through because he will bring you through. He will bring you through. The only way to get through a tunnel is to walk from one end through the other. Now you can turn around and go back, but you won't get anywhere. If you have to go through that tunnel to get where you're going to go, you got to go through it. That's so all there is to it. No, I'm not trying to rhyme. Anyway, I want you to be encouraged. This is going to be short, but I want you to be encouraged because God is working things out for you. You don't even know it. He's working things into you while he's working things out of you and working things out for you. Be encouraged. You're not alone. You hear me? When you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. I'm really hoarse because I've been doing a lot of coughing this week. You know, got I had gotten over the cold with the coughing as the residue. But this other song was on my mind earlier, and I feel like God is saying this is time. Bear with the voice and listen to the words. All things work for our good. Though sometimes we can't see how they could. Struggles that break our hearts into sometimes blind us to the truth. But our Father knows what's best for us, and His ways are not our own. So when your pathway grows dim and you just can't see Him, remember you're never alone. <clears throat> God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand and you can't trace his hand, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone is faithful and true. He alone knows what is best for you. So when you don't understand and you can't see his plan, you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. God bless you. I hope that says something to somebody, but peace be still in the name of Jesus. God will pull you through.